welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, a Pineberry Pi hat drive for the Raspberry Pi 5. Specifically, this is a hat drive bottom, which as you can probably guess fits under a Raspberry Pi 5, and this allows a 2280 M.2 NVMe SSD to be connected to the Pi 5's PCIe interface. So, let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have our Pineberry Pi hat drive bottom, which is one of the first M.2 PCIe adapter boards for the Pi 5 to go on sale. And if we open it up, very easy unboxing, here it is inside. And this I purchased from the Pineberry Pi website for €25.99, which is about £22.25 or $28. And whilst this is a hat drive bottom, Pineberry Pi also sells a version called the hat drive top, which sells for €20, Euros, which is about £17.18 or $21.60. And this is a conventional hat or hardware attached on top board, but cannot mount a 2280 M.2 SSD and inevitably obstructs a cooler. And so personally, I do prefer the hat drive bottom, which is of course technically a HAB hardware attached below rather than the hat hardware attached on top. Anyway, as so we can see, we get the board itself. Let's get rid of that. We've also got a little bag of a mounting hardware, but if we just get the board out like this, very straightforward. Let's just uh, take it out of uh, here and uh, let's put it down uh, over here where we can clearly see it has got an M keyed M.2 slot that can accommodate either a 2280, a 2242 or a 2230 MVME SSD. As the label indicates, connectivity here is single lane, PCIe times one. That's the same as a Raspberry Pi 5. Hardly surprisingly, it's got single lane PCIe connectivity. And uh, this board can actually work at either PCIe 2.0 or 3.0 speeds. And uh, a Raspberry Pi 5 in theory only works at PCIe 2.0, but it can potentially do 3.0, and this board will allow us to experiment with that. Also on the board, we've got a 5 volt power input here, which allows us to power an NVMe drive apparently via this input rather than via the ribbon cable, although here I'll just be using the ribbon cable to take power as well as data from the Pi. And uh, if we turn this over, we can see the ribbon cable is pre-attached on this board, but to a connector where you could remove it if you wanted to. And beneath the ribbon cable, we also have two LEDs, which as we can see are labeled for power and for drive activation. So shall we attach an NVMe SSD? I think we should. I've got a crucial P3 Plus over here, which we'll just put in there, and I'll use the, uh, the mount to uh, secure it in place. There we go. And I'll now also put on some of the mounting hardware it came with the board. And uh, there we go. We're now ready to attach this to a Raspberry Pi 5, which I happen to have over here. Hello, Raspberry Pi 5. So what we now need to do is to attach the ribbon cable into the Pi 5. So let's just give you a closer shot of that. And it's difficult to show you this on camera without my fingers getting in the way. But basically we need to raise this little piece of plastic on the Pi. Excuse my fingers, there we are, that's now open. And what we want to do is to fit the cable into this. Let's try and rotate things and keep it in focus, something like that. We want to fit this with the cable with its connectors facing the Pi, with the gold bits facing the Pi. So let's see if I can do this on camera vaguely in focus and vaguely showing you accurately. Oh, that's not too bad. That's gone in there like that. If I can show you that's gone in. And I now just need to, uh, with that firmly in place, lower a little plastic thing down like that. And my fingers will now get in the way a second. Sorry about this. There we are. But that is now pressed down. I'll have to do both sides together. There we are. And there we are. That is now firmly connected to the Pi. So let's now put the board under the Pi like this. It all comes around like that. And we should now be able to secure it in place if we just turn it back the other way like this and put in the screws. And there we are. Everything is now mounted. We've got our hat drive bottom mounted under the Pi. And so we're now all ready for a performance test. Yeah. 
Greetings. Here we are back again. The Pi is now connected up and running, as you can see. And I've also added some extra standoffs beneath the Pi to raise it from the surface. And as we can see on the end of the board, the power LED for the hat drive is illuminated. So the hat drive appears to be working. And if we go across to the desktop, here we are. Let's launch a terminal. And if I do an LSBLK, a list block devices, we see that. All we can see is our micro SD card. And it's important to note that using an adapter board like the hat drive with a Raspberry Pi 5 connected to its PCIe connector is not entirely plug and play. Well, it is plug and play to the extent you plug it in and you really have to play around with things to make it work, but it, it's not automatic. Specifically, we need to edit the Pi's configuration file using this command here, sudo nano to run up a nanotext editor as a super user, and we're editing the file config.txt in the boot folder. So if we do that, there we are. If we go right down to the bottom like that, we're going to add in two commands so we can access our NVMe SSD. First, the uh, DT parameters like that being a NVMe, and then secondly, DT param again, and this time we're going to say PCIe one lane, and we're going to say gen equals two. We'll start out using the PCIe 2.0 standard. And if we now press Control X, it'll say, do we want to save modified? Yes, we do. And that's file enter on that. And as we've now edited the config file, we need to do a sudo reboot so we can uh, reboot the Pi. And here we are back on my desktop. Very exciting. We'll open up our terminal again. We'll again do an LSBLK, list block devices, the drive connected to the Pi and uh, Yes, we can now see our NVMe SSD plugged into our hat drive. Things do seem to be working. And I'm sure like me, you want to find out the speed of this drive. We can do that using the HD parameters test. So we'll just bring up the command for that. There we go. And in fact, this is the syntax to test an SSD connected via USB on the drive. And uh, I did this earlier using the drive we've currently got in the hat drive, but when I had it connected into a USB 3 to a M.2 NVMe adapter. And when I ran that test, I got a result of 306.6 megabytes a second. So this gives us a bit of a benchmark for the speed of the SSD we're testing, but connected previously by USB 3. Anyway, we're now back in uh, real time. Hello, and let's just change SDA to uh, NVMe. 0N1 and press enter. Very exciting. What speed are we going to get? Remember, this is PCIe 2.0 speeds. But what can we get? That's pretty good, isn't it? 428 megabytes a second. I'm impressed with that. But of course, you want to know, can we go faster? Will the Pi sustain a PCIe 3.0 connection to this SSD? So uh, let's try that. We'll go back into the config file like that. Go down to the bottom. Scrolly, scrolly, scroll, change that to Gen 3. And again, we'll just uh, Control X. Do we want to save it? Yes, we do. We'd love to. There we are. Sudo reboot. Oh, it's exciting. The tension is killing us, isn't it? Let's let the Pi reboot. Here we are. And if we now just run up our uh, terminal again, again, we'll do an LSBLK. Okay, just check it's still working. It is. And uh, we'll go back to HD parameters, which must be sitting somewhere. There it is. What speed do you think we'll get this time? Let's have a look. Hopefully it'll sustain a better speed. Of course, we should do some extended tests to check we can really work reliably at PCIe 3.0. But wow, that's not bad, isn't it? It actually is giving us 816.57, mustn't forget the 0.57 megabytes a second. I'm pleased with that. That's a very good speed using an NVMe SSD on a Raspberry Pi 5. Right, we've now set up and tested our NVMe SSD as a storage device that's up to 10 times faster and a lot more reliable than a micro SD card. But what if we want to boot our Raspberry Pi from the NVMe SSD? How do we do that? Well, the first thing to do is to make sure the Pi is fully updated because the latest firmware is needed to use an NVMe drive. So to do this, we need to do a sudo apt and an update like that. And then a sudo apt and an upgrade. 
which for me is very fast because I've done it very recently. There's nothing to actually be upgraded. But uh, if you have had something that's been upgraded, it's important you then do a reboot. So we'll do a sudo reboot, just so you've seen the whole process. Next, as we're back again, we need to go back into the terminal. You probably have guessed that, where we need to edit the Raspberry Pi's EEPROM configuration file. And to do that, we need to enter sudo rpi eprom config and uh, edit like that. Here we are in the configuration file where we need to go to the very last entry, which needs to end with a six. We add the six in there to tell the Pi to boot from the NVMe SSD if one is connected. Next, we need to go down to the next line and add a new entry to enumerate over our PCIe bus. Sounds very exciting, but basically we type PCIe underscore probe equals one, like that. And if we now do a control X, do we want to save? Yes, we do. And uh, there we go. And it'll tell us we'll need to reboot to apply that update. So guess what? We should do just that with a sudo and a reboot. And there we are. We've now set up our Raspberry Pi 5 to boot from an NVMe SSD if it contains an operating system. And of course, our NVMe SSD doesn't currently contain an operating system. So what I'm going to do is to go to the menu and go to Accessories and SD Card Copier, which allows us to clone our existing system drive to a new system drive. So I'm going to select the device to copy from to be the micro SD card we've currently booted from, and we're going to copy to, guess what, our NVMe SSD. And if I click on Start, like that, do we want to do this? We will erase all the content on the NVMe SSD. Yes, that's fine. We'll click on Yes. And there we are, the process is started. And indeed, the activity indicator LED on the hat drive is flashing. So let's now use the magic of filmmaking to speed on through the cloning process. And with the duplication complete, let's now shut down our Raspberry Pi. Next, I'm going to remove the micro SD card from the Pi, which is going to be slightly tricky given that we've got this cable here in the way. In fact, it's going to be an absolute swine. I wish the Pi had a proper clicky micro SD card thing. It doesn't. We can just about get it out. It's certainly disconnected. Can I get it clear? I think I can. This is a design flaw, I think, with this, because you can't get the damn thing out without removing the cable, can you? Oh, you just about can. That is not the best way to remove a micro SD card, is it? This is out. Warts and all, you can see we've got it out, and I can now press the button here to reboot the pipe. And we're now coming up again. Cross your fingers, we should now be booting from the NVMe SSD. We will do this in real time. This looks good, doesn't it? Things are working. Yes, that is good. We have booted a Raspberry Pi 5 from an NVMe SSD. And just to prove it, we'll go back to the terminal for a final time and do a final LSBLK, a final list block devices and Yes, the only drive on this system is the NVMe SSD. It's the only form of storage connected. We booted from it. We've used a Pinebury Pi hat drive to boot from the NVMe SSD here on the Raspberry Pi 5. As we've seen in this video, the Pinebury Pi hat drive bottom works very well indeed allowing an M.2 NVMe SSD to be used as extra storage or a boot drive on the Raspberry Pi 5. The only downside is that it does constrain access to the microSD card slot, something that seems to be avoided on the forthcoming Pi Maroni NVMe base, which at the time of making this video is yet to go on sale. And Raspberry Pi themselves haven't really helped matters by having the PCIe connector directly above the microSD card slot, given that it was inevitable that uh, M.2 adapter cards to take a 2280 NVMe SSD would have to go under the Pi. You wouldn't want them on the top, it would, have, it would be too big. It has to go under the Pi. You don't really want a NVMe board on top anyway, I don't think, because it constrains cooling. And therefore, the Pi's design was not in uh, Pi and Pi's favour when they were trying to work out how to make their adapter board. And as I said already, it does work very well indeed. 
But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,